Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Land, please abiding by the with plus easy wins on the last episode. And I think the run could have been hard if we didn't get the greatest luck of all time on Void, but we did, so it kind of wasn't. Um, 8v, 8-4, VJ, 6q, FF. Obviously, like, don't be a fool. We do want to take Scapular. Um, and we should be very excited. Because we got to be Kane. We don't get to be Kane all that often. Apparently I was wrong, and Kane uh, can get bad pills, by the way. I Was that like an old mechanic? I don't know, man. I've been playing this game for so long now. I feel like... <sighs> uh, tell you what, remove this from the equation, or at least kick it over here maybe a little, and then go, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Even got the tinted rock out of it. Um, I feel like my own grandfather. I'm like, back in my day, Coke used to cost a nickel. It came in a glass bottle, and Kane couldn't get bad pills. Everybody looks at me like I'm insane when I say that, but there were... I, I'm telling you I was there. I lived through it. Yo, worth the spirit hard gambit, in my opinion. Another run that's starting real strong. Can't really complain about this too much. Uh, it's still Sunday, by the way. Still doing well. Out of snowboard anecdotes. <laughs> that's also pretty good. I think that's probably better. Um, we do need a space bar item to take advantage of it, but still. Now I'm just like... I got pre-anecdotes, you know? Because the... the the week to come. It's not really that busy, but I'm stoked, like, for the first time in a long time. Uh, some might even say, if you're Anna or Elsa, for the first time in forever. And I don't care. You could be a 35-year-old dude with a big salt and pepper beard. If you're gonna deny that for the first time in forever has some hits, like, there, there's some hooks in that song. You can dislike Frozen, okay? So I, I watched Frozen a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, whatever. Um, for the first time in forever. Like, literally. But more accurately, for the first time ever. Um, the story, very simple. There's like four beats in the whole story, right? But the music... Dr. Dre was up in the lab with a pen and a pad. They're like scientifically engineered... Oh, that was so close. To be the catchiest songs that have ever been written. I, that's my honest assessment. I don't know how much time they spent on those songs, but whatever they spent on the songs, it was worth it. Yeah, uh, could I live my whole life being happy never to hear Let It Go ever again? Oh my god, yes. But even still, I'm like, I get it. It's a good song. It's not the kind of thing I would put on, you know, my... My road trip playlist. I'm not gonna listen to it in the gym or whatever. You fool! That's me. I'm the fool. Uh, but still, you know. And then for the first time in forever, you know, in summer, there's there's songs in that movie that bring the heat in a big way. The only one that doesn't really bring the heat is like the the song at the very start of the movie where they're like carving up the ice. I was like, man, whoever made that song, they must feel pretty bad. Because literally every other song in this film, I have heard 35 times. Despite never having seen the movie. And then there's one song that's like, you know, We are good, we chop ice, dung 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 That guy's gotta be very disappointed <laughs> in the way that Frozen shook out. If you're out there, it was probably the same composer for the whole thing, would be my guess. But, you know, what the heck do I know? Hold on, hold on. This could work. Hold on. This could freaking work, dude. Just do this. Start here. Don't try to do anything too fancy. Grab this. this is a very good get. And then if you want more money and you want to get paid to play, go, go try to do that. Much better idea. Oh! Anyway. I didn't watch any movies. This I, I told you I'm still so far behind on, on movies. Um, and that's okay. Like, it doesn't really bother me uh, to be out of the loop. Because I was in the loop for a long time this year. Saw Midsummer in theaters, dude. Only like 
10 million other people did that. No, probably, probably like 4 or 5 million. It's a very elite and exclusive club. You know, I'm, I'm gonna stick with the Locust of Death, and, and you can't tell me otherwise on this one. We don't get pay to play, so freaking what, no big deal. But I, something in me is like, dude, you gotta go see. Knives out, you gotta go see Uncut Gems. I don't really want to get into this, um, but I'm gonna. So I guess maybe I do want to get into this. I, uh, you know, I've seen all this. I've seen every Star Wars film except Solo. And then the animated Clone Wars movie. It was a TV show. No, not the TV show, which I heard is okay. I'm talking about the movie that everyone forgot about. Um, you mean episode two? No, not that one. That was not a cartoon. I mean, it, it was cartoonish in its dialogue and characterization. But I mean, like, it's a literal computer animated 3D movie. Anyway. I, uh, I have literally no pull from the Disney Corporation to see Rise of Skywalker. I just, for whatever reason, you know, I, my, my brain just went, eh, I think I'm done with this one for now. Honestly, <laughs> I think you, you kind of whiffed, I mean, even if you like the movies, you gotta admit the, the trilogy came together in kind of a very uh, haphazard way controversial way for sure definitely seems like they were making it up as they go along and uh, I'm not trying to say it's a bad movie because I haven't seen it and from what I see a lot of people like it why even bring it up then because for whatever reason on Twitter um, I uh, I think because I am a nerd and I follow nerds and I tweet nerdy things Twitter has decided that they should put dozens of Star Wars tweets from people I do not know in my feed every day and the the tweets are asinine they're from grown adults and they're tweeting things like I don't care how controversial this is I want the world to uh, to know I loved the rise of Skywalker okay person whose Twitter name has Organa in it you know I get it also, I don't care how controversial it is. I want the world to know that nobody cares at all. <laughs> so, uh, all right, let me back it up. Because it's a little mean-spirited. But also, uh, let me rephrase. I don't care at all. And it's not that person's fault that their uh, public-facing message found its way to me. It's Twitter's fault for totally irrevocably screwing up their service by starting to algorithmically deliver tweets to try to promote engagement instead of just giving people what they want, which is tweets uh, from people you follow in the reverse order of when they were tweeted from newest to oldest. Um, that's not that's not their fault. It's not my fault either. But I'm like, man, it's Star Wars, dude. To be fair, I did tweet uh, a, a very, very slight defense of Marvel this year. But it was not a defense of like, stop calling the movie bad, I like it. It was this, you know, Martin Scorsese uh, has made, you know, like 12 amazing movies in his life. I don't know, maybe 20 amazing movies in his life. And he went, uh, I don't really get these pictures. And then everybody on Twitter took it as an opportunity to be like, see, Scorsese's with me. He's our guy. He's probably not your guy. Anyway, I don't know, maybe. I don't know what he does with his spare time. Uh, I do want the bombs here. I just felt the need to be like, you know, hey, here's what I tweeted if I remember correctly. It was something along the lines of like, hey, you know, if you don't like Marvel movies, that's fine. But you know, like, people who see Marvel movies, you, you can go see more than one movie a year, you know? I saw, despite not seeing a lot recently, saw a lot of movies in theater this, this year. Saw every Marvel movie in theaters. Saw, you know, Booksmart. That movie made like $8 million at the box office. Me and my family are responsible for like a third of that movie's domestic gross. I saw it and liked it. You saw it on freaking Amazon Prime Video, okay? We're not equals in this situation. I was out there supporting independent art. That gives me the ability. That, that means me and Scorsese are roughly equals in this situation. But I just, I'm like, man. I guess it's like... It's, it's what happens when fan accounts go wrong. 
It's like if your whole account is based on Star Wars, and then Star Wars gets, you know, a little weird. <laughs> it loses its way for a little bit. Um, all of a sudden, you're like, Honey, why are you so upset? I've been arguing with trolls all day! Don't talk to me! I'm loving this blood rights, by the way. And in the meantime, Stan Luna. I don't, like, I still have no idea what that means. All I know is that now and then when I say Stan Luna in videos, somebody on Twitter ats me and says, Oh my god, Northern Lion said Stan Luna in his most recent video. So I just like to, really, I just make those these videos at this point to keep that person as happy as possible. And again, like, honestly, I just want to be clear. If you like uh, Rise of Skywalker, or you love it, you hate it, I don't, I don't care at all. Please keep your opinion to yourself. I, if I want to, I'll ask for it. It'll probably happen when I see the movie on an airplane four months from now. Then I'll be like, hey, uh, you guys hear about this Rise of Skywalker movie? Whoa, what's up with that? The Emperor is back, apparently? Didn't see that one coming. Random! I guess I'll just pick up this random lightsaber over there. Random! Anyway. Hold on. Dude, I love uh, the sack dagger. But the thing is, with this little HP, I think we gotta be a little bit more sensible in our approach here. Maybe get some spirit hearts to back us up. This also allows us to take advantage of blood rites, which has been pretty sick so far. So I don't think we're gonna do it. I have reached the point in my life where, do I like to argue? Sure, some, sometimes I like to argue. But I like, like, fun arguments. Like, when the Canucks win a game, and then I tell Mouth, and he goes, relax, they just beat, you know, blank team, blank team sucks. And then I look up blank team, and I saw that they beat his team, the Winnipeg Jets. And then he goes, yeah, but that's not fair because our defense has been obliterated by unforeseen circumstances. And then you just post the gif of, you know, like a guy shrugging or like, you know, you get the idea. I no longer have any real interest in arguing over media because, you know, I realized, you know, I've always intellectually known that like one day I was going to turn to dust and like I'd probably regret a lot of the time that I'd spent idly being angry for no reason. But really like within a couple of years, like the last couple of years, I should say. Really, that's... I, I felt that feeling more viscerally, and I'm like, man, life is way too short to argue about this inane nonsense. <laughs> Give me some nonsense that is at least nane, and I can get down with it. That's that's where I want to be now. Also, if you're a big, like, proponent of the Star Wars community, more power to you. I thought I was. I was pretty stoked for The Force Awakens, although I'll admit I didn't even see it in theaters. I was one of the... 400 people on planet Earth that was like, I'll just wait till it's on Air Canada on demand. <laughs> um, and then I did, and I was like, yeah, it's pretty good. And then I really liked The Last Jedi, and I don't care who knows it. Thank that one. We'll try to save this stars card. But then, like, I just... Solo. Obi-Wan. Disney Plus is The Mandalorian. J.J. Abrams is back. You know, it's just, just, just got a little too much. It was def okay. So here, I'll, I'll, I'll give you an even more apt description. Cause keep in mind, I was alive, you know, and I have memory of the prequels coming out. I remember the excitement in, you know, '98 or '99 when the Phantom Menace came out. I was only ten, but I was still jazzed, and so was it. Like that was a movie, even though it sucks. Spoilers. Um. When I was 10, kids talked about that movie for like five years. Probably a lot of, you know, parents and grandparents still have like the Boss Nass 7-Up can in their fridge right now. They're like, well, nobody drinks 7-Up. Do you want this Boss Nass can? Um, it was a cultural event, right? So, I understand. That the sequel trilogy is kind of like, you know, the excitement of the prequel trilogy for a generation slightly younger than myself. And also kind of a, for, for diehard Star Wars fans because the prequel trilogy kind of ended up in the same boat as the sequel trilogy. Like, but faster, if that makes sense. Like, everybody kind of, the day the prequels came out, everybody was like, this rules. They woke up in the morning and went, what the heck happened? 
The, the, the backlash of those movies happened, like, immediately. And existed... Even as, like, I don't know, again, I was 10 to 17 when they came out. Um, it, it completely dominated the discussion of those movies. You know? Now, the prequels, for whatever reason, have been rehabilitated, which I find hilarious. You know my opinion, because I've said it too many times. Episode 1, overrated, and also terrible. But the pod race, no. It's, it like, it's just so, it's not only boring, it's, like, offensive. No, I don't mean, like, culturally offensive, even though it is definitely also that. <laughs> but, like, that's not even what really bothers me, you know? It's more that it's just, like, you know, Jar Jar Binks gets, like, his tongue stuck in the pod racer. That, you know, it's, it's just, it's for kids, but also, like, simultaneously. I was trying to work that through in my psyche, you know? There's some goofy stuff in The Last Jedi that's, like, for kids. And people held it against that movie in a big way. Which I think is fine. You know, as an adult, that stuff's not as entertaining. Um, but then they would, like, in the same breath, like, praise the prequels. And I'm like, Jar Jar Binks, he, he kills, like, the whole droid battalion by just tripping over his own feet. And, like, an artillery strike just gets triggered that destroys them as a result of his buffoonery, you know? It's madness. I just, just hold yourself to the same standards is all I ask. Episode 2, uh, underrated, still horrible. But I, I have very little agreement with the, the most common internet take, which is that episode 1 is bad, but episode 2 is worse. They're both very bad. In my opinion, this is all opinion conjecture. I still think episode one is a lot worse. It does have the duel of the fates, but I think you know if you take it as the sum, the whole instead of the sum of its parts, episode two is is very very slightly better than episode one, with the caveat that it's also still really really bad, and then. I, my personal opinion, and I think people have been coming around to this. I think I'm, I'm starting to get myself into the majority on this one. I've maintained since I saw it that uh, Revenge of the Sith, underrated, and actually, like, pretty okay. I, there is still a lot of really weird stuff in that movie that doesn't totally work. But overall, I think the movie does, it, it's by far the best of the prequels. The sequels went, like, differently for me. I saw The Force Awakens. And, I mean, I know that not all of the movies I'm about to say are even part of the prequel trilogy. But, you know, I saw The Force Awakens. And I was like, hey, a new Star Wars. Wow, this is pretty good. What a cinematic event. Then I saw, you know, Rogue One. And I was like, ooh, a bold new take on a story that we all know. Very interesting. Kudos to you. Not a great movie. Or, let me rephrase. Not an, a masterpiece. But it, I think it's a great movie, actually. I think it's... It's up there for me. In the Star Wars trilogy, or the Star Wars uh, universe, at least. Then I saw The Last Jedi, and I was like, sick, more of this. And then a whole lot of people, a lot of people love it, but a whole lot of people were like, never do that again. Uh, and then they came out with Solo, and I was like, I get it. I don't need to see this one. Just kind of... They burned all the Star Wars enthusiasm out for me. You know, it's one of those... It's, it's like Isaac. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one Isaac a day, people are like, that's sick. Two Isaac, some people are like, that's pretty cool. Some people are like, I don't want to watch any anymore. We, we've got the one Isaac sweet spot. And for me, this the Star Wars sweet spot is like, you know, one movie every five years. Don't shoot the messenger. It's just, it's my honest to goodness opinion. If they could make them consistently better then one every three years might be okay. But for now, I think you've only earned the once every five. I'm sorry to say it. I mean, I love The Empire Strikes Back. Everybody does, because it's the right opinion. But I do too. I'm not a begrudging Star Wars fan. It's like, I get that movie. This is, this is where it all comes together, dude. 
Anyway, I've spent way too much time talking about this. But I'm not talking about it to, like, argue about it. I'm just giving you my opinion on the subject, you know? And, like, you know, and you know I was going to bring it back to this. Why don't you feel that way about Marvel movies? Because they haven't made a stinker in a long, long time. They, they've they got, you know, a, a universe with some vision. And, yeah, you know, they're generalized for mass appeal. There's no doubt about that. Um... But they, they've had a work order, they've stuck with it, and they've done right by the by the consumers, for the most part. One day, they're gonna make a stinker, and, and then some of the stuff that I've said here will start to apply to them. Nothing lasts forever, you know? I didn't even watch The Mandalorian, and The Mandalorian seems sick. I will, I'll give you that one. I should watch it, because I love Werner Herzog. I could, I could listen to that man read his grocery list. I would be happy for the rest of my life. Fun cotton of eggs. Plucked. From the cloaca of the chicken. Farm fresh, free run. That's not a very good Werner Herzog. But to be fair, it's harder, because that's not something I've ever heard Werner Herzog say. I should have just said, bring me Jack Reacher. <laughs> I, I, I want this to be clear. This is, in, this is the opposite of a dunk on Werner Herzog. I've said this exact sentence before, I'm sure. But the man is living like... I think if I were a filmmaker, he's living my ideal life. Which is, he's made some incredibly arty movies that are really well respected he's made some some of the most influential documentaries of like the last 40 years that allowed him to do all sorts of cool stuff i mean grizzly man is a, an all-time classic documentary encounters at the end of the world the um documentary about antarctica is incredible and it's about it's not a nature documentary it's a documentary about man with nature as the context um, anyway. And then, on top of all that, he just ends up in all these goofy, fun projects. Like, it's just so bizarre to me that he's, like, one of the most respected living filmmakers. But he's also, he was the bad guy in Jack Reacher. You know, that, like, four to six out of ten Tom Cruise movie? That they made two of, which is just crazy. And then, yeah, he's in The Mandalorian as well. And then he had that great quote, baby, when they brought Baby Yoda to him on set. The baby was so cute, it brought tears to his eyes. There's another great Werner Herzog uh, quote. Uh, and it, this is a... Stop me if you've heard this one before. Because I've said it before for sure. But he got shot when he was during or when he was doing an interview for press for one of his movies. And the interviewer was, it, I want to be clear, it was with like a, it was a BB or a pellet or something like that. Um, but the interviewer was like, oh my god, do you want to like stop and get that treated? And Werner Herzog was just like, it is not a significant wound. <laughs> and he just finished the interview. Which is ill-advised, I'm assuming, but also hilarious. Because I can't convince people in my life... You know, like, if I go to, like, my parents' house, and they're like, Hey, do you want, like, uh, horseradish on this? I'm like, no, I think I'm good. They're like, come on, try the horseradish. You'll like it more. I'm like, ah, I think I'm okay. I think I want to try it first, and then, like, not have the horseradish. They're like, it's really better with the horseradish. I can't even convince other people in my life to just, like, let me have the autonomy to eat the way I want to eat. Um, Werner Herzog has enough charisma and persuasive ability that he could get shot and people are like you want to go see a doctor he's like nah not necessary it's just different <laughs> different scopes of of manhood <laughs> of manliness let me say it that way for now thanks for watching i hope you guys have enjoyed the episode if you did click the like button that was a great deal of course subscribe if you want to see more in the future for now thanks for watching i will see you next time see ya see ya